When was the last time you really listened to someone? I mean, fully attentive listening to what was being said. When was the last time you felt listened to, that you felt truly understood? These are some of the questions asked by Kate Murphy, author of You're Not Listening, What You're Missing, and Why It Matters. She says that today we're all encouraged to listen to our own hearts, listen to our inner voices, but we're rarely encouraged to listen carefully and intently to one another. She says we're engaged in a dialogue of the deaf where we talk over each other. We're consumed with social media, with other conversations. We're groomed to lead the conversation, to define ourselves, shape the narrative. All the value is placed on what you project, not on what you absorb. But this is a problem because listening is arguably way more valuable than speaking. Wars have been fought, fortunes lost, and friendships wrecked all for a lack of listening. Hey, I'm Lori Sulpizio with the Conscious Leadership Academy, and we're gonna talk about the lost art of listening as presented in Kate Murphy's book, You're Not Listening. I don't know how often it happens to you, but you definitely know when you're being listened to and when you're not being listened to. You can tell when somebody is giving you their complete undivided attention, and really focusing on what you have to say. It feels good and it creates closeness. Unfortunately, in this time of instant communication and social media, our attention span has shrunk to an all-time low. And listening is a dying art. But we're gonna talk about what Kate Murphy says about listening and how to be a better listener. As always, I'm gonna use the words directly from the book as often as I can. If it's in my opinion, I'll try to tell you, but this book is so great, you're gonna love hearing her words. And I really encourage you to read it because I'm gonna give you a big picture, a quick overview and some of the nuggets and key takeaways, but you're gonna wanna read the whole thing. In order to write this book, the author spent almost two years in the academic research on listening, the biomechanical and neurobiological process of listening, as well as the psychological and emotional effects of listening. She interviewed people of all ages, races, social strata, experts and non-experts in listening, leaders, scientists, athletes, artists, authors, all to discover what listening meant to people and how to do it well. In this book, we discover how listening goes beyond just hearing what people say. It's paying attention to how they say it and what they do when they say it. It's paying attention to the context and how what they say resonates with you. She says that listening done with deliberation can really transform our understanding of the people in the world around us. And the result of that, it will enrich and elevate our experience and our existence. You've probably heard of the irony of social media. We're more connected than we've ever been before, and yet more and more people feel isolated. And yes, we're coming off the heels of a pandemic, but even before COVID, we were incredibly disconnected and alone, despite all the friends and likes we might get on social media. It probably doesn't surprise you to know that our attention span has gone down, but do you know how much? According to research by Microsoft, done as late as the 2000s, the average attention span has decreased from 12 seconds to eight seconds. There's a saying that goldfish don't have a memory because they only have a nine second attention span. Just consider that we now have less attention than a goldfish. And the result of this, we're not getting the attention that we crave from the people in our lives that matter. The fix, we can really listen to each other and give each other our attention. You probably can think of a good conversation you had and how meaningful it was. You learn so much about others, about the world, about yourself. People are interesting. We just need to ask the right questions and then listen to their answers. One reason we would wanna listen, it can help us understand what people want. This is great for businesses. If you're creating products for clients, for customers, it's great to figure out what the people in your life want and need. In order to listen at this level, you need to be curious about people in conversations. You need to say enough to let people know that you understand. You actually don't have to say very much, but you do need to demonstrate that you're following the conversation. In the book, she calls this effective interpretation. 
So think about the last time someone has told you a story about something that happened in their life. Imagine being able to really listen to what they shared was the most difficult part, the most upsetting part, the most joyful part. Then you might say something about that part, which in turn could invite this person to open up and share more about it. We so often make things about us. So if somebody tells us that they lost their job, we immediately tell them the story about how we lost our job. This is what Carl Rogers, one of the most influential psychologists of the 20th century called active listening. It's hearing the meaning that's below the conscious intent of the speaker. It's the ability to get to the why of the story people are telling you, what it means to them. But we're not good at this. So instead we give tone deaf responses. But here's the thing about this. Listeners aren't born, they're made. So you can become better at this skill, being curious, being open, acknowledging someone's point of view with sensitive responses. All of these are developable skills. One common thing that gets in the way of listening for all of us is being distracted by our own thoughts. Wait a minute, what do I need to get at the store again? Can I get everything done on my to-do list today? What time is that meeting tomorrow? Our mind wanders and we miss a lot of what is said. This happens to all of us. We are all moving at a million miles per minute right now. Many of us hamsters on that hamster wheel, just going and going and going. But when we get distracted, when we don't focus on what's being said, we miss not just credible information, but meaningful information. The next time you're in a conversation, attempt to really focus. Focus on what's being said. Focus on the person you're talking to. If you can't, maybe say that. Hey, I'm not able to really focus right now. Can we have this conversation another time? Give that a try and see if you can limit the tendency to be distracted. Who is it easier to confide in? The stranger or somebody you're close to? Surprisingly, a lot of people would rather talk to strangers. This is what's known as closeness communication bias. It's the idea that in close relationships, we become complacent because we believe that we already know what our people think and feel. And we do know our partners really well. We know our kids really well. We probably know our family and friends and colleagues pretty well. But people evolve and people have experiences that we're not a part of. And to assume that we know everything about everyone is just incredibly wrong. So when we're talking to strangers, they really listen because they're interested and they don't presume to know anything about us because they don't know us. So the next time you're in a conversation with somebody you're close to, don't assume you know what they're gonna say. Be open to whatever idea they're presenting and be willing to really hear what they're offering. Okay, so this next section is critical for where we are right now in the world and especially where we find ourselves in the United States. It's listening to opposing views. Many of us have gotten to where we are in our lives because we know our own points of view and our own opinions very clearly. We're locked into them and we hold on to them tight there's an unconscious fear that if we listen to other opinions or views that we might somehow lose sight of our own. Listening to our own viewpoints confirms our own identity and our place in the world. It's why we all listen to media and news that confirms and affirms our own viewpoints. It's why we often jump in and interrupt people that we disagree with instead of waiting and hearing them out. I think this is one of the most dangerous elements of where we are right now in the world. We locked ourselves into our own little boxes and are unwilling to listen to anything else. Here's the thing. We only become secure in our convictions by allowing them to be challenged. The author says confident people don't get riled by opinions different than their own and secure people don't decide others are stupid or malicious without knowing who they are. People are so much more than their political views and their labels. An effective opposition only comes from having a complete understanding of another person's point of view. Essentially, we're talking about the ability to have civil discourse, something that seems really infrequent. In our organizations, in your friend groups, we have got to challenge ourselves to hang in there with people who are different than us. 
We've got to be willing to listen to what might seem to be the other side, because in listening to them, we might find that they're not that different after all. It's really hard to be immersed in difference, especially if that difference feels hurtful to who you are. And there's a lot of that in the world, but we're not gonna solve anything by just pushing each other into opposite corners of the room. We've got to be willing to listen to each other, especially those people who have different views than our own. Okay, and how about this? How well do you listen to yourself? This is a tricky one because sometimes our inner voice can be a great source of truth and inspiration, and other times it can be defeating, demeaning, and critical. Inner dialogue, when done in a positive way, can really help performance. We know this is true in athletes and with children, as well as with adults. Often our conscious can help guide us as we ask ourselves questions like, do you really want to do that? What if you put yourselves in their shoes? Learning how to listen to ourselves and help ourselves have an inner dialogue that's positive is another great aspect of effective listening. Okay, so I really suggest you pick up a copy of this book and check it out. She talks about improv, how it's a great way to learn to maintain focus and make a conversation be more than just about you. She talks about silence. What's your relationship like with silence in a group space? Westerners seem to avoid silence at all costs. Check out the next meeting you're in and notice how long people sit in silence or recognize the nervous shifts in the seats when silence lingers too long, and how quickly people intervene to break silence. But don't be afraid of silence. Learn to turn off your own inner voice and just be in the space. Listen to what might be there. Listening is hard work, but it's very worth the effort. Think about how well you're sensitive to subtle cues and how well you recognize and pay attention to verbal responses, tone, and body language. This is not only important for when you're listening to somebody, but when you're talking and needing to recognize if somebody's listening to you. Remember that we can't be attentive all the time. Active listening is a demanding activity and we need to be sensitive to the effort it takes. So perhaps we can be more intentional about the big conversations we're needing to have, how and when we have them. Think about the great listeners in your life. How do they make you feel? Isn't this the way you would want to make others feel as well? So a great place to start practicing this skill and developing it is with the people you're closest to, your partner, your family, your kids, your friends. Practice active listening with them. Ask people in your life, am I a good listener? What could I do to be a better listener? And then be willing to hear the answer. This is actually all about giving feedback and that's a hard thing to do. We've got a couple videos of both giving and receiving feedback and I'll put the link in the description down below. This was a great book. It's a super important skill, one we all need to be better at. So spend some time thinking about how you are as a listener and make the effort to develop your capacity to be a good one. Thank you so much for spending the time with me. I know your time is valuable. Thanks for listening. Haha, <laughs> no pun intended. I'll see you next time.